During this session, I'm going to walk through a sample pepper for partial hospitalization program to help you understand the statistics and what they could mean for you. Now, the pepper is distributed a lot electronically as a Microsoft Excel workbook. And so to navigate within the pepper, you would click on these worksheet tabs along the bottom of the screen. When you first open your pepper, you will be uh, brought to this page, which is called the Purpose page. And on the Purpose page, it's going to identify for you the most recent quarter of statistics that are summarized in that release of the report. So here we know this pepper summarizes data for the most recent three calendar years through the fourth quarter of calendar year 2016. Here on this row, you will see your provider number or CMS certification number as well as your provider name. There is a bit of information here about where you can access the user's guide for the PHP Pepper on the website and how you can request assistance. A little bit below that, uh, it identifies the version of the Pepper, which is Q4CY16. Again, that stands for the fourth quarter of calendar year 2016. And on this row, it would identify for you your MAC jurisdiction. Remember, the, the jurisdiction comparison group is comprised of all of the PHPs that submit their claims to the same MAC for Medicare reimbursement. We also have a link to our website as well as to the training and resources page. When we click on the definitions tab, this worksheet shows us the complete numerator and denominator definition for each of the target areas that are included in that release of the PEPPER. So if you're curious about uh, what types of claims or uh, episodes are summarized in the numerator or the denominator, you can click on the Definitions tab and you will be brought to this page where you can easily see that information. In addition, uh, a while back we added hyperlinks so that you can be taken to the, uh, the pepper, the report in the pepper that's for that particular target area. So if we click on this report for group therapy, we will be brought to the group therapy uh, target area report. And then if we want to go back to the definitions page, we simply click on the definitions worksheet link and we'll be brought right back there. So that's a little navigational tool to help you get through the PEPPER a little bit easier. The next worksheet is called the Compare Targets Report. And this report summarizes the most recent calendar year of statistics for your PHP. Now I like to refer to this report as the heart of the PEPPER. It is the only place within the PEPPER that you can see your statistics for the target areas all on one report. Now it does represent only the most recent calendar year, but using this report you can see everything all on one page. So let me go through this report. Um, it will show for you here the target area name. And I might should mention that the, only the target areas for which you have reportable data for the most recent calendar year are going to be included on this report. So you know we have four target areas now in the PHP Pepper, and this particular PHP only has reportable data for three of them. Here is a description of the uh, target area numerator and denominator in this column, we will see the numerator count. Then we will see your PHP's target area percent, your PHP's national percentile, your PHP's jurisdiction percentile, and your PHP's state percentile. And then this last column identifies the total amount of Medicare reimbursement that you received for these numerator episodes. So let's take a look at this first target area, group therapy. This particular PHP had 72 episodes where there was only group therapy billed during the entire duration. So no individual therapy, only group therapy during the entire episode. 
When compared to the denominator, the total number of episodes, which is not included on this report, but it's on the target area specific report, we have a target area percent of 30.8. So um, when we compare our target area percent to all PHPs in the nation, we have a national percentile of 16.3%. So what does that mean? Well, remember when we were talking about percents and percentiles, and I showed you the latter example, where we sort the target area percent for all PHPs in the nation from highest to lowest. And then we calculate the percentile for your individual PHP. The percentile tells us the percent of PHPs in that comparison group that have a lower target area percent. So our national percentile of 16.3 tells us that 16.3% of all PHPs in the nation have a lower target area percent than we do, our target area percent being 30.8. Now remember also in the PHP Pepper, we identify what we call outlier status when the PHP's target area percent is at or above the national 80th percentile. If that were to occur, then we would see our target area percent displayed in red bold font. But obviously this, tar this PHP is at the 16.3 national percentile, well below the 80th the, the national 80th percentile, and is actually towards the lower end of the uh, distribution of all the PHPs in the nation, which is not a bad thing. So we are not identified as an outlier. Now you'll notice here that the jurisdiction percentile cell is empty, as is the state percentile. This will occur when there are fewer than 11 PHPs in the jurisdiction, or less than 11 PHPs in the state comparison group that have reportable data for this target area, which is group therapy, and for this time period, which is calendar year 2016. So when there are not enough uh, PHPs that have reportable data, we cannot calculate the percentiles, and so these cells will be blank. And here then we can see that the our PHP received $76,747 in Medicare reimbursement for these 72 episodes that did not have any group, I'm sorry, that had only group therapy billed. Now if we look at no individual psychotherapy, we can see that we had 216 episodes where there were no, um, was no individual psychotherapy provided gives us a target area percent of 92.3%. So 92.3% of the episodes of care had no units of individual psychotherapy billed during the entire episode. Our national percentile is 28.5. So 28.5% of all PHPs in the nation have a lower target area percent. So we are about uh, in the bottom quartile there, almost just above the bottom quartile. Since we are not above the national 80th percentile, we do not see our target area percent identified in red bold font. So um, that would mean that you're not an outlier uh, is identified in the pepper. Now for this target area, we do have uh, jurisdiction and state percentiles calculated. The jurisdiction percentile is 15.8. So when we are comparing ourselves to all of the other PHPs in our MAC jurisdiction, 15.8% of them have a lower target area percent than we do. And as compared to all PHPs in the state, 18.8% of them have a lower target area percent than we do. We received a total of $473,691 in Medicare reimbursement for these numerator or numerator episodes. Um, I might should mention that this report, the Compare Targets report, is the only place within the PEPR where you will see your exact percentiles. We have calculated here for you your exact percentiles for these target areas so you can 
uh, have an idea of exactly where within that distribution of target area percent your provider falls. Another point I like to make is that um, at times the sum of payments here can help, it, help you in prioritizing where you might want to focus your review efforts. If you are an outlier in a target area, and that target area also has a rather large sum of Medicare reimbursement, that might be more justification for taking a closer look at that target area to see if there is a, uh, anything uh, c of a concern that might be going on. OK, so let's click on the next target area, the group therapy target area. Now. Um, the first thing that you'll see when you click on any of these target area reports is you'll notice that we have a graph up here. This graph uh, identifies or graphs for you your provider's target area percent, which is represented by these blue bars, for the three calendar years. What's nice about this is you can see how your target area percent might be changing over time, if it is increasing or decreasing. And you can also see how it compares to the 80th percentile for the three comparison groups. Now in this target area, we only have the 80th percentile for the nation. Uh, jurisdiction and state are not calculated. But we can see how our target area percent uh, compares to that boundary and whether or not we're getting close to the national 80th percentile. You'll also notice that this oldest time period here has no blue bar. The target area percent is not calculated for that oldest time period. What that means is that there were too few um, episodes. There were fewer than 11 episodes in either the numerator or the denominator. And when that occurs, we do not calculate the statistics. We do not display them in the pepper. Below the graph is the data table for the target area. So here you would see your target area percent for the three calendar years. You would see your numerator count, the denominator count, the average length of stay for the numerator, and the average length of stay for the denominator. This would be the average amount of Medicare reimbursement for each of these numerator episodes and the total amount of Medicare reimbursement for those numerator episodes. So this information is nice for those people who really want to know the numbers behind the graph. And so all of these details here can be helpful if you're looking to do additional exploration. Below the data table, is the comparative data table, which identifies for you the target area percent that is at the 80th percentile for nation, jurisdiction, and state for each of the three calendar years. And these are the values that you would see graphed as the red trend lines up here in the graph. Now since the jurisdiction and state 80th percentiles are not calculated, they are zero, we only see the national 80th percentile up here. And one other piece of information I'll share with you, each of these target area reports includes suggested interventions that the PHP can consider when their target area percent is at or above the national 80th percentile. It gives you some things to think about as to what you might look into if you are identified as an outlier in the PEPR. These are general, very general suggestions. Um, they're not meant to be directive, but they are steps that you can take if you are looking at your PEPR statistics and you're feeling like something doesn't look right. Now you will notice here that we did revise this target area as of the Q4 CY16 release. That's the PEPR that was released in July of 2017. The change here that we made was to um, move from using HCPCS codes to identify group therapy uh, to revenue codes. 
So uh, that change was made at CMS's request. Most providers are not going to see any change or impact on their target area percent, but there are a few that did see some uh, decrease or a small, smaller number that saw an increase. So if you do see changes in your target area statistics for this group therapy area, it could be because of the, uh, the change that we made to the way we identify the group therapy. We moved from revenue codes, I'm sorry, from uh, Hicks Fix codes to revenue codes. Changed to using Hicks Fix codes. I might have just said that incorrectly. We're, we're now using Hicks Fix codes. We're not using revenue codes. Sorry about that. Okay, moving on then. The no individual psychotherapy target area. The, um, these reports are all structured in the same way. So once you get used to looking at a, a PEPPER target area report, you'll notice that they're all structured in the exact same way. So for this target area, which was also revised uh, in calendar year for the most recent release, the Q4CY16 release, we also changed to utilizing HICS-PICS code to identify no individual psychotherapy. And for this target area, we are no longer counting psychiatric testing as individual psychotherapy. So uh, we're, we're not considering that anymore. So this is strictly focused on uh, the hicks fix code for um, psycho individual psychotherapy. Now for this target area, we can see that this provider's target area percent has increased rather steadily over the past couple of years. And what this means is that they have an increasing number of episodes where the beneficiaries do not receive any individual psychotherapy. And so if that's something that they expect to see when they look in their PEPPER, then uh, that's all uh, fine. But if something doesn't look right, if, if, if they know that they are providing individual psychotherapy on the vast majority of their, um, for the beneficiaries, then something might be going on with the way the claims are being submitted here. And that might be something to take a look at. Below the graph, we have, again, the data table with these same uh, statistics that are provided for you to consider. For this target area, we do have the uh, 80th percentiles calculated for nation, jurisdiction, and state. Those are 100% all the way around. So that's why we are not distinguishing any uh, the, the three comparison groups up here. It's 100% all the way around. And then we have the suggested interventions below the comparative data table. Now, this target area, again, did change as well. Uh, most of the PHPs are not going to see any changes in their target area percent when looking at the last release. There are some who uh, will see their target area percent increase, and a smaller number saw their target area percent decrease. So again, keep that in mind if you're comparing this new pepper to last year's pepper. Episodes greater than 60 days of service. Uh, this provider has no reportable data for any of the target areas for this, uh, for any of the time periods for this target area. And so what this means is that they don't have uh, at least 11 episodes for any of these calendar years that are greater than 60 or more days in length. They have 60 or more days of service, I should say. And so uh, if, if this were my PHP, I would look at this and say, well, that's probably a good thing that we don't have a, a high number of long episodes or episodes where there are 60 or more days of service. You'll notice that in the graph we still have the 80th percentile, but we don't have any of the statistics in the data table or the blue bars on the graph. You can see the 80th percentile for jurisdiction and state are also empty here or not calculated. When we're looking at 30-day readmissions, this target, uh, this provider um, has remain relatively stable with regards to the statistics for this target area. Um, 
And again, all of these statistics related to the target area are calculated and displayed in the data table below. One thing that I might mention is that uh, whenever a provider sees drastic changes in their target area statistics from one time period to the next, whether that be a drastic increase or a drastic decrease, I always encourage providers to think about what might be behind those drastic changes. Has there been uh, some change in your referral sources or in the types of patients that you are treating? Have you had new therapists? Uh, physicians come on board that have different perspectives? Have you had any changes in your medical record coding uh, system? Have you had any uh, new staff come on with uh, that are new billers? Um, clinical documentation improvement can also have an effect on coding as the types of, of uh, diagnoses and procedures that are coded. So keep all of these factors in mind when you're looking at your TEPR statistics. And if something doesn't look quite right, I always encourage people to review some records and determine if everything is being conducted according to Medicare payment policy, that the diagnoses and procedures that are submitted on the claim are substantiated by the documentation within the medical record. Just make sure that everything is as you expect to see it. And if not, then you have the opportunity to put some corrective actions in place uh, to rectify that. We have a couple of other reports in the PHP PEPR. This report is called the Top Diagnoses Report. And for the most recent calendar year, it identifies for you the top 10, up to 10, clinical classification system diagnosis categories. Um, there have to be at least 11 episodes for a category to be displayed. So you can see here, this PHP has these four diagnosis categories identified. We will identify the total number of episodes for that category ending in the most recent calendar year the proportion of episodes to total episodes, and the PHP's average length of stay for that CCS category. Below here, we have some summary statistics for the top CCS categories, so that would be for all four. And then we have a summary information for all CCS categories. We can see here that these four CCS categories made up 98.7% of this PHP's episodes. And then below here is just a note reminding you that the report's limited to the top diagnosis categories up to 10, for which there are a total of at least 11 episodes ending in the most recent calendar year. And also where you can get more information on CCS, the clinical classification software. And the very last report in the PHP PEPR is the same type of information. Uh, but at a national level. So here we are identifying the top diagnosis categories for all PHPs in the nation for the most recent calendar year. So we can see it in the nation what are those top 10 categories, the total number of episodes for each of the categories, the proportion of episodes to total, and the national average length of stay. And this might be of interest to you in, in the case that you want to compare your uh, average length of stay for a category with the national average length of stay. And that is a review of the PHP PEPRs.